Hello friends, in today's documentary, we will address a topic that arouses much controversy, namely, flat earth theory, pros and cons. What do you say, is it flat or round? Leave a comment with your opinion to discuss it together. Your opinion is very important to us. The history that is taught in schools is a lie, humanity is being manipulated. And occult organizations have taken over the world and want to bring the earth to ruin. These are some of the ideas supported by the followers of the Flat Earth Theory, which have recently met for the first time in the country. The Earth has the shape of a flat disk with a diameter of 40,000 kilometers, in the center of which is the North Pole. The South Pole does not exist at all and what we call Antarctica is a mountain of ice that stretches along the edge of the Earth, surrounding it with the rest of the world. Proponents of her case have been working to make the actual transcript of this statement available online. They claim that all photos and videos of Earth from space are falsified by space agencies as part of conspiracy theory, and that space in general does not exist. There is no gravity in their cosmology either. Objects are attracted to the Earth, because they are supposed to move constantly upwards with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per square second. Finally. There is no atmospheric pressure. In ancient times, people truly believed that the Earth was flat. This concept appears in the cosmogonic myths of the ancient Egyptians and Babylonians in Hinduism, Buddhism and Scandinavian mythology. However, early scientific research has suggested that the Earth is shaped like a ball. For example, Aristotle in 330 BC, E, proved the sphericity of the Earth. In particular, he noticed that the starry sky looked different at different latitudes. In the Middle Ages, views on the structure of the universe were diverse. In the writings of the Church Fathers, the Earth now appears as a pancake, now as a ball floating above the sea under a spherical dome, and in the illustrations in the book Cosma Indokoplevsti. The surface of the planet is inscribed in the tabernacle, a tent where it could be placed the church, and the sun rises from behind a great mountain and sits on it. However, Ptolemy's idea dominated, the universe is a closed system, in the center of which there is a stationary spherical earth, surrounded by nine rotating heaven spheres, which are located on top of each other. This idea is reflected in Dante's Divine Comedy. However, there have always been people who have argued that the earth is flat. They were usually religious fundamentalists, illiterate or charlatans. In 1956, the British Samuel Shenton founded the International Society for Flat Earth Explorers IFERS, better known as the Flat Earth Society. The organization was to become the successor to the Ecumenical Zetetic Society, founded by the English writer Samuel Rowbottom. This man who lived in the 19th century, gave a lecture on the flat Earth under the pseudonym Parallax and wrote the book Zetetic Astronomy, Earth is not a globe. In one of the lectures, in which he could not explain why the masts of ships remain visible on the horizon, while their bodies disappear, he had to flee. And in one of the experiments, he falsified the results claiming that the lighthouse lantern on the horizon was completely visible, although in fact only half of it was visible. His contemporaries called him a charlatan. But he noted his intelligence and skill as a storyteller. Shenton took Robottom's ideas seriously. Shortly before the launch of the first satellite in the USSR, he said, The same thing happens with these satellites. Due to the space race, the company's ideas did not gain popularity. But with the arrival of a new president, journalist Charles Johnson, Flat Earth Theory gained many supporters. Johnson acted like a professional journalist. The Apollo program became a source of information for popular leaders have publicly claimed that landing on the moon was a farce, filmed in Hollywood and written by Arthur Clarke or Stanley Kubrick, and that the company gained several thousand supporters and lasted until Johnson's death in 2001. Was revived by the name of Samuel Shannon's man, Daniel, in the United States. The ideas of the flat earth were supported and promoted by religious fundamentalists such as John Alexander Dowie and Wilbur Glenn Valiva, who led the Dowie Christian Catholic Church founded in 1895. In one of the Russian-speaking groups, 
the supporters of the Flat Earth v Contactor wrote that the community was created to resist the pseudosciences that fall within the foundations of the biblical world order and is called to fight against all those who preach atheism and obscurantism. They describe their worldview as scientific orthodoxy. Earth photos are fake. The organizer of the event, R.D. Roos, is originally from Medias, studied at the Polytechnic of Cluj, but also has a degree in legal psychology, a subject he studied at John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York, and completed a master's degree in education all over the ocean. He also explained why he decided to hold the conference. The purpose of the first International Flat Earth Conference is to bring to the public's attention this topic that has been growing since 2015. We wake up to the reality that everything we are told is not so if we check, if we no longer accept what is offered to us. If we do a little research, we can see that the images of Earth from space that NASA offers us are either fake or computer generated, he said. However, Bruce could not explain why mankind would not want to know the truth about this. A satanic conspiracy against Christians. At Saturday's conference, he explained that occult organizations, including Freemasonry and the Illuminati, did their best not to let people know the truth about the shape of the Earth. This is because, according to the followers of the Flat Earth Theory, the Earth is not a spherical planet, but a fixed, flat realm, and above it are the Sun and the Moon. And they also claim that a large-scale conspiracy has caused mankind to be lied to and manipulated for centuries, inoculating the idea of the globe. Gravity does not exist, and Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein would have played only the games of the world's elite when they developed the theories on which most physics is based today, the guest said. Einstein is a boulder. I said it because he practically, through his experiment, wanted to confirm gravity, evolutionism and, implicitly, the caveman. And it is Newton who has set the new tone. The new tone for ignorance, the new age, the new science, the antichrist. And it is, after all, the religion of the sun god, another way to worship the sun, but even worse, in his opinion, is the fact that humanity would be led to perdition. Earth would be invaded in the future by aliens, who, in his view, are demons or even fallen angels that the Bible writes about. Many of those who opposed the plan and risked telling the truth perished in more than suspicious circumstances, and others were ridiculed and discredited. And ordinary people, even Christians who believe that the Earth is a round body, will then be safe victims, defenseless against unleashed infernal forces. It is no coincidence, he says, that many television stations have been broadcasting more and more UFO documentaries lately. Mankind is now prepared for what he calls the Great Illusion, that is, the time when aliens from other worlds will be presented to humans as brothers, misleading them. What evidence do they say that the followers of the Flat Earth have in their support? The sun would set faster in the south than in the north, which would prove that there is no globe or hemisphere. Another example was the sunset in the south. This is what the path of the sun above the flat earth looks like. The sun goes down in the south and the speed is higher. It is much faster sunset in the south. Dark darkness without twilight immediately after sunset. It's getting cold instantly. There is no explanation for such a thing in the heliocentric model. Obviously such a thing is not discussed on TV. I've talked to people in Australia, South Africa, and maybe in New Zealand. And not to mention the flat earth, I asked this question. And it was confirmed to me that it was getting dark right away and it was getting cold quickly. Everyone confirmed that to me. He also claims that all planes take it north even if they want to reach the countries of South America, New Zealand or Australia, which again, he says is proof that the Earth is flat and in no case spherical or round. Dot. Last but not least, he referred to other planets and how they can be observed from Earth. The elliptical orbits of Mercury and Venus are much smaller than Earth's orbit, that's logical, that's the model. To look at Venus and Mercury at night, you must look at the Sun. This is the problem. So you should only see them during the day. There is an explanation in the heliocentric model that the view is tangential. But no, they can't stand it. 
especially since over long distances it is even harder to put into practice. Plus, Venus can be seen at midnight, not immediately after sunset. Mercury can't be seen an hour after sunset either. Here are just the basics. The horizon is straight, and the photos with a curved horizon are taken with fish eyes. It just seems to us that the horizon is straight. We are on the surface of the planet and we are too small in height and a field of view too narrow to catch the curvature of the line. But it can be seen from the window of an airplane or from the roof of very tall buildings. Space photos and videos are fake. It seems that not only NASA and Roscosmos leaders are involved in the global conspiracy, but also ordinary cosmonauts who broadcast personnel from the ISS and amateur astronomers who shoot objects into deep space and other planets without any reward. Strange logic. Flatbed lawyers often cite the following video as an example of using a chrome key. Indeed, this type of color key is used as a substrate for 3D animation. However, the grid looks different. The dimensions of the cells in it are different. The video grid is used to video record the trajectory of the movement of objects on a light background. There is no gravity. The Earth only moves upwards with universal acceleration. Suppose that if a person jumps, the Earth will not pull him back, there is no gravity, but he will rise. Then how do birds, insects and planes fly? Indeed, according to this theory, nothing can stay in the air for long, because the disk is constantly growing. The Sun is only 4,800 kilometers away and is about 51 kilometers high. And how, then, can we explain the change of seasons and the length of a sunny day, as well as the climatic zones? The Earth's surface would always receive the same amount of heat and light. How can planes land on a runway if the Earth is round and constantly rotates around its axis? By the time the landing, the band would have moved away from the landing site. Atmospheric pressure pulls with it everything in its field of action. That is, everything that enters the atmosphere flies along with the Earth's surface. No atmospheric pressure. Invite your opponent to climb the mountains and monitor at this point. You can solemnly read him a school physics course. The moon is a hologram. At this point, you can apologize to the person and end the conversation. It's more fun. How can a plane fly over a rotating Earth because the speed of the linear rotation, at the equator, is about 465 meters per second? But the fact that the plane rotates with the planet, like all inhabitants and objects or another question, why are objects visible, which should be behind the horizon and which, if the Earth is spherical, should be hidden? Because objects are visible. The Earth is visible. The conclusion is that we are living on an endless, slightly hilly terrain. Other proponents of brain liquefaction are even organizing internet discussions on the the favor of a flat Earth was. Indian Vedas, which, according to one participant in the discussion, say that the Earth is a disk. The shape of the Earth is approximately spherical oblique. According to scientists, due to the rotation, the Earth is flattened at the poles and bulging around the equator. However, there are thousands of people worldwide who are convinced that the Earth is flat. What are the arguments of the flat Earth theory proponents? If the Earth were round, someone would have to live on the edge of the ball, with a perfectly vertical horizon. And someone else would have to live under it, going up and down, NASA's space program and landing are pranks. NASA is subsidized in the United States and receives tens of millions of dollars a day. He could not admit that they used billions of dollars and did nothing. Gravity does not exist. This is an unproven theory. Can anyone explain how the water is on a spinning sphere and why it does not gather at the equator? Of all the existing technology, what device can show the rotational motion of the Earth? Clearly, there is no such device. Does anyone know how a space shuttle can withstand the absolute vacuum of outer space, given that it is pressurized? The Earth has no core, as scientists claim. They say that in the core the temperature would be 4,000 to 5,000 degrees Celsius. Who develops this temperature and how it is scientifically deduced? When the highest temperature created by man was in controlled spaces and reached 2,900 degrees Celsius. 
huge amounts of oxygen, oxygen that does not exist in the center of the Earth, would be needed to maintain combustion. Why is NASA the largest helium consumer in the world? Somehow for balloons that support satellites at 20 kilometers altitude. Is the Earth flat or spherical? 1. Why do we see the same stars every night, if the planet is in constant motion? Shouldn't the stars we can observe be completely different after a while? This question is often asked wrong from the start, because we don't see the same stars every night. Living on Earth it is natural to have a limited perspective on many aspects, including the shape of the Earth. Given this situation, scientists are creating certain models of the solar system, the Earth and so on, and the model will be tested based on independent observations. Which means that a certain model, a sketch of the Earth can correspond 99% with the observations and further. That 1% that does not verify, makes the model impractical. In the Northern Hemisphere, for example, we see the small chariot and the great chariot. While in the Southern Hemisphere things are different, and we can see the Southern Cross or the Centaur constellation. The constellation Orion, also called the Hunter, is in the area of the celestial equator, and can obviously be seen from both hemispheres. I'm not saying that, and neither is NASA, anyone can verify what I said using a telescope. The idea is that using the flat Earth model, the stars form a dome above the disk, so theoretically everyone should see both the northern and southern hemisphere stars. The stars in the Northern Hemisphere rotate clockwise from east to west counterclockwise around the polar star. While in the Southern Hemisphere we can see completely different stars moving clockwise around the star Sigma Octantis, located at the celestial South Pole. If we want to visualize this information on the model of a flat Earth for the sake of science, it is impossible for us, because we have the North Star in the North, which is okay. But the Sigma Octantis star should be seen in the south. Where is the problem? Well, the south of a flat Earth indicates three different directions, from three different continents that see the same star. Which means that the same star must be in three different places simultaneously, which is obviously impossible. Why does the North Star seem to remain motionless throughout the year? Because people forget that the stars are not stationary and move simultaneously with the Earth in the Milky Way. We can make an analogy with the cars on the highway, going at a constant speed. The cars keep their relationship with each other giving, from the inside, the illusion that there is no movement. To this we add the huge distance between us and these stars to which we refer. Respectively the North Star, 323 light years means exactly that many kilometer, 3 quadrillion 55 trillion 815 billion 942 million 643 thousand 598. It takes about 230 million years to get around the Milky Way perfectly. From point A to exactly point A performing more or less simple calculations, we find that the angle between the initial distance of the Earth the final and the North Star changes by 0.000056 degrees, i.e. the position changes, but imperceptibly. 2. Now, if you continue to watch despite the complicated explanation above, we begin to prove the absurdity of the other theories held by the fans of the Flat Earth. The horizon. Everyone knows the clear evidence of the curvature of the Earth. The vessels advancing towards the horizon and disappearing from the visual spectrum little by little. The explanation given by the conspiracy theorists. The vessel is simply too far away to be seen by humans, so if we look at the horizon through a telescope, the vessel will reappear in the visual spectrum. Which is wrong. Indeed, the telescope magnifies the image of the vessel, which can no longer be seen with the naked eye, but looking through the telescope we can still see how the vessel disappears beyond the horizon. The footage used by the so-called supporters of the Flat Earth illustrates ships that are at the limit of the horizon and not that have completely crossed it. Don't you believe me? Suppose that the ships do not disappear due to the curvature of the Earth, then the same explanation could be used for the sun rising and setting along the horizon. I want any proponent of the theory of the flat earth to point the telescope at the sun and film how it re-enters the visual spectrum, because it does not happen. Being clear proof of the geoid shape of the earth, 
Now the skeptic's explanation will be in perspective again. I want to remind you, when we talk about perspective, the bodies that enter and leave the visual spectrum change their apparent size, when a body is closer to us, it seems larger than when it is at a distance. The moon and the sun appear in the sky and disappear along the horizon, keeping the same size, so obviously it is not an illusion of perspective. But only a normal phenomenon in the case of a spherical Earth. The city of Toronto, seen from the opposite shore of Lake Ontario, is a good example. Because we have as a landmark the CN Tower that reaches a height of 553 meters. Images taken from a height of about 1.8 to 2 meters should capture the city with 147 meters hidden behind the curvature of the Earth. And that's exactly what happens. The city of Chicago, seen 96 miles across Lake Michigan, should not be visible due to the curvature of the Earth. And yet conspiracy theorists claim that these images are clear evidence that the Earth is not spherical. In this case, it becomes the superior mirage, which does not necessarily turn the image upside down, and it is obviously a mirage, an illusion due to the fact that the image is distorted, an aspect captured on video. 3. There is absolutely no real picture of the Earth taken from space, it is a wrong statement. There are real pictures of the whole Earth. The Godmother does not claim that the Earth is a perfect sphere, nor does it falsify space images as everyone claims. To capture more detail, they compose an overview of several separate images of planet Earth. This gives a clarity and detail that could not be captured in a single picture. The Earth looks spherical because obviously the water apparently levels out major imperfections such as the Marianas pit and on top of that there is the atmosphere. Which again tends to give a perfect spherical appearance to the Earth which is a geoid. The fact that Neil Tyson claims that the Earth is pear-shaped does not refer to an actual pear. But wants to emphasize that the Earth is flattened at the poles and bulging at the equator. Films in which researchers claim that they cannot leave the planet are taken out of context. Mankind cannot leave the surface of the planet without a prototype meant to do so, a complex funded space program that in principle has a good reason. There are artificial satellites flying over the planet, but people expect to see them when each satellite is the size of a car, orbiting the planet from 19,000 kilometers to 36,000 kilometers. In all the promotional advertisements of the future spaceships that will be able to reach for a month or more, the new prototype is compared to the one that managed to reach this goal for the first time, belonging to the Apollo program. 4. Why don't the stars appear in any of the pictures in which the Earth is captured? Every photography enthusiast knows that the truth lies in exposure time, aperture and ISO. Although our eyes can quickly adjust to the light of the stars in the sky, the situation is not exactly the same for cameras, which need a longer exposure time to capture the light of those stars. Once you capture the light of the stars, everything in the light body in the photo becomes blurry, blurred, and the clearer the picture you want with the stars. The greater the blur of the photographed fullness. Thus, professional pictures of the Earth are made using advanced techniques so that the celestial body is focused and not the stars. Now. I've read some comments from proponents of the Flat Earth Theory, and some questions seemed less embarrassing to me, so I'll try to answer them all. When a body is on the surface of the Earth, it implicitly moves simultaneously with it, and any other body on which no force is exerted to cause it to move in the opposite direction of the globe's rotation suffers in the same way. So, most people read all sorts of nonsense on the internet and draw the wrong conclusions. If a helicopter rises from the ground, obviously, a force is exerted that influences the altitude at which the aircraft is located and not the direction of movement. Precisely for this reason, the helicopter moves simultaneously with the Earth not touching the ground, because it does not change the direction of movement, but the altitude. If you want a simple example, think of all the people on the London Underground. The London Underground travels at about 85 km per hour, if you are inside the tube you can jump and you will see that you land at the same point. Because I repeat, you do not effectively influence the movement, you exert a force that makes no difference in the given situation. And if we are still in this chapter, 
It is obvious that we do not feel the rotation of the Earth or motion in general because there is no acceleration, speed is constant and to make analogy with the subway. If it does not accelerate or slow down, there is no inertia and we do not feel motion. 5. You don't have to be a genius to observe the effects of gravity on the environment. The fact that objects are attracted to the Earth is clear proof of the existence of gravity. We could not simply say this, but taking into account the fact that we can calculate the speed at which objects fall. We can accurately approximate the trajectory of a particular falling object and we can determine the maximum rate of fall of an object subject to air friction force, gravity is justified. The same force is the reason why you can lift a ball from the ground but you cannot lift a car. The car has a larger mass and is implicitly attracted by a higher gravitational force. But this property is not only valid on Earth, we can observe the phenomenon of gravity in the case of Jupiter's natural satellites. What do proponents of the flat Earth theory think? Well, this force that we call gravity does not exist. So what is the reason why objects are attracted to the ground? Their immediate answer is the density of the object. They consider that an object with a density higher than air causes this fall if we can call it that, of the object. The density of an object is represented by the ratio between its mass and volume. A ping pong ball is exactly the same size as a golf ball, but a golf ball is heavier because of its higher density, that is, because of a larger number of molecules in a small volume. There are special rooms that simulate the vacuum, so rooms where the density of objects is no longer taken into account since there is no air. However, experiments show that despite the lack of air, Objects of different densities, such as a ball and a feather, fall with exactly the same speed, the indisputable proof of the existence of gravity. What I found even more interesting is how people accuse the agency responsible for NASA's public space program of indoctrinating the population and falsifying images. First of all, NASA is one of the 72 existing agencies that study space. The European Space Agency is the agency that deals with something like this in Europe, but due to the fact that it is not so publicized. Humanity never complains about the authenticity of the information received from them. NASA is strictly owned by the United States of America, with which we obviously have no connection. That being said, I believe that anyone who continues to believe in the theory of the flat Earth after watching this video is unrealistic. The school does not misinform or NASA does not falsify all the discoveries, documents, images and programs made by them just to fool you. Free speech is very important and totally beneficial. But as we see this situation, some individuals use this free speech to share unwanted ideas without reasoned evidence. Just because someone tells you to open your eyes and not be fooled by the government without supporting your words with plausible evidence, doesn't mean you have to believe. Science is based, as I said, on individual research and observations. If NASA miraculously invented all the stars in the Southern Hemisphere, I am convinced that anyone who owns a telescope and lives in the Southern Hemisphere would have noticed that.